All right, StockTwits, here we are at 2026 CES, and alongside me is Tom Stepien, the CEO of Amprius. So Tom, congratulations on the Best of CES Innovation Award. We're going to get to that in a second. Okay, perfect. But first, let's define our terms. Let's set the table here. For people who aren't familiar with Amprius, how would you characterize this company? Sure. Amprius is a battery company. We have a lithium-ion battery. Our onlyness is the fact that we offer twice the energy density of everybody else. And the normal language, I don't want to geek out on you, uh, that's lighter. We're at CES, you can geek out. We can geek out. Lighter, longer, stronger. For the same energy, we have a lighter battery that allows a craft like the Nokia drone here to fly twice as long just because of the battery. And it's a stronger battery at the end of the day. For the same mass, we have twice the energy, which allows the e-motorcycle behind me to also go twice as far or twice as long or complete the entire motocross. So lighter, longer, stronger. Uh, print the t-shirts. Uh, with Nokia, let's talk a little bit about the drone behind us. Go a little bit deeper into why Nokia decided to partner with you guys. And um, tell us a little bit more about this drone because aviation is a massive revenue driver. Represents a huge part of your business. It's a huge part and drones are becoming ubiquitous. So Nokia flies this craft and it bounces 5G signals. So we've all been in areas where your cell phone isn't getting a signal. So you tend to put repeater stations or antennas or whatever they put up. Yeah. That's tough to do if you are in mountains or you're in the Amazon or something like that. So the way Nokia bounces those signals is to use drones and sends them up for eight, 10 hours at a time and then sends another one up to replace it. So they're flying drones all the time. This is their drone in a box solution. They are interested in providing coverage for as long as possible for all of the customers. They did a shootout, a very competitive analysis, the Coke Pepsi challenge on different batteries, and guess what? We won, Amprius won, because we provide the longer part of the lighter, longer, stronger because of the batteries. So it dramatically improves the value that Nokia is able to offer to their customers just by changing out the battery. Now, speaking of batteries, tell us a little bit uh, more about the Best of CES 2026 Innovation Award. What product won that award, and is it commercially available? Yeah, so we're honored to receive the award. There were something like 2,000 companies that applied, and 20 were selected. We were selected because of the super high energy density. So it's 520 watt hours energy yeah. per kilogram yeah. in the denominator, and that's anywhere from 80% more to twice the energy, the energy density compared to a graphite cell that you can buy out there. So that, again, allows Nokia to fly longer. Airbus has a subsidiary called Alto that has a bird that hangs out for two months at a time. Solar panels on the wings that uh, provide energy during the day, charges our batteries on that but it hangs out for two months at a time. Huh. They use the that award-winning battery that is at 520 kilowatt hours per kilogram. So yes, it's commercially available. What have the orders been like so far? It's been great. So we finished 2024 at 24 million revenue. 2025 is closed, but we can't quite talk about it yet. Consensus, right, all of the analysts who cover us have us around 70 million, which is about 3x in 25 revenue compared to 24. Wow, that's great. Stay tuned on what the actual number will be. And we feel really good about where we are here early in 2026. Oh, okay. What are you guiding for 2026? We're not guiding yet. Stay tuned. We will be in the springtime here as we talk about our Q1 results in early March likely issuing guidance because a lot of investors, including many of yours, are interested in understanding. Is it going to be 3x again? Is it less than 3x? So, so that's the type of guidance that we will provide. What should investors be paying attention to relative to Amprius this year? A couple things I think are important. Number one is we talk publicly about our customer growth. In the Q3 call, we said there were 444 customers, 80 of whom, or over the last two years, 80 of those were brand new. Wow, that's nice, so you're getting new customers into the funnel uh, and getting them, sometimes samples, right? We provide samples before they, and they test before volume orders come in. 
There's also about 80 of those were repeat customers, right? So, okay, we have won their trust and we continue to earn their trust. So that's one metric to look at. You should also look at revenue growth, right? We've had a nice uh, quarter over quarter growth in Q3 over Q2, it was 42%. That's gonna be hard to repeat, uh, but you should look at the increase in order growth. And then number three, look at the profitability. We're not quite there yet, but we are gross margin positive. And Q2 was 9%. Nice. Q3, it was 15%. Stay tuned on Q4. But companies need to get revenue. Step two, get gross margin positive so you stop shipping dollar bills. And then eventually, and we think we can do this in 2026, we've said, become profitable. Okay, whenever you talk about drones, uh, defense contracting and defense customers are always going to be an important part of the conversation. Given some of the global instability that we've seen, even so far in 2026, have you experienced maybe a, a little bit of a, a boost in inquiries from customers or prospective customers? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, the drones and the asymmetry that we see that Ukraine has taught us, right, yeah. um, is unbelievable. And that has changed dramatically, not just to defense, and there is strong inbound interest. We were at an AUSA conference, an Army conference in Washington in October, and it's drone fever. Everybody is on that. And the U.S. is changing. The drone dominance program is now effective. I will be in D.C. on Monday, and there's all sorts of discussions in and around the Pentagon about how do we take this seriously. The U.S. is... is believes, public, they've said this, they're playing catch up. And the DDR, Drone Dominance Program, DDP, is, is helping to do that. On the civilian side though too, it's amazing. There's like 1,800 police departments that have drones tied into their 911 systems. So hmm. in cities, right. you can send out a drone fast and it can get to the place Right. faster if it's a smash and grab yeah. or yeah. if they're looking for uh, a, a, there's a fire or something like that. You can dispatch drones and get there in 90 seconds and then figure out if it's real. In more rural areas, there was this beautiful story about this kid that wandered out of his backyard in Massachusetts in November. Yeah. And they sent up drones, right? They all caught all the cops from the uh, surrounding areas. They did not send up helicopters and they sent out drones and they found, thankfully, this four-year-old who wandered away. Um, and they, it just is a game changer. It's a force multiplier. So we're seeing that across the board. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that story uh, as well. And finally, uh, you know, now that the Colorado factory is in the rear view, you announced last year that you are no longer gonna be pursuing that particular manufacturing yes. facility. Uh, that, make, that means you have to lean a little more heavily on the Korean Alliance, correct? Can it you does. talk about that? Sure, so our customers are asking for us to have cells manufactured. We have an outsourced model. So NVIDIA does not make their chips, they design them, and TSMC and others make the chips. Similarly, Amprius designed batteries, and we have partners in China, Korea, and other uh, countries soon to be announced that are making those batteries for us. Some customers want us to go to national defense authorized countries which means Korea, Queen US, Queens. and others. Exactly, so we are responding. Uh, we started, we, we saw this coming. We started last year, even before, um, and announced our first Korean partner in May, and they were shipping cells, one of the small cells here we can take a look at later, our first cell shipped from Korea in September. Last month we had a kickoff of the Alliance uh, in Daejeon, a little bit south of Seoul, and there are about a dozen companies that are in this Alliance helping increase the ability to provide cylindrical and pouch cells outside of Korea. So it's a great country, it's probably number two in terms of capability, China of course is number one, and there are other countries coming. Okay. Tom, thank you so much for the time today. Thank you. Uh, our investors will be watching Amprius very closely in 2026. Thank Excellent. you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.